How you guys doing out there? My name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Crystal Edge Technology Projection Screens using Smart Technology Gain. All right, so I just got to bring something up really quick. I've had, well, I, like I said, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and this would be the first time in about six years since I've been in this business that I've ever heard anyone say that, um, do you really need to watch your screen in a fully lit room? Which I find really, really hilarious. I'll tell you why. Because... Um, if you know anything about now, I'm, I'm pretty old. I'm about 48 years old. I have been around quite some time. I have been around when the projectors were pretty much reel to reel, when you actually had to feed the tape into the projector. So I've been around for a while, and I've seen all kinds of, of interesting uh, changes in technology. Now, um, that's my experience on how far I, I go back when it comes to projection. Um, I remember that when I was a kid. I remember sitting in class and seeing the teacher come in and actually feed the projector with the reel. There's no such thing as the projector on the TV and 4K and none of that stuff ever existed. Um, no, it just, it just didn't exist. So um, I've seen a lot of interesting things in technology. And um, back in those particular times when you did have uh, projectors, and I remember when the Sharps came out, the Sharp projector came out and it was, man, it was crazy expensive. And there was another projector that came out, I can't think of the name of it, but it was a very expensive projector. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me about that, my cold here. Um, at that particular time, screens were just white. You said white screens, and they were like a, a, a 1.0 or 0 0.1 gain screen. It wasn't a very powerful gain screen. They were just all white. So basically, when you would watch a movie, of course, the color would be faded and washed out. But it was just the ability to be able to project an image onto a large surface. Uh, that was the amazing thing about those screens. But at that particular time, screens would wash out. You would see them in boardrooms and so forth with all the lights on. And they would wash out. And we'd have to watch these screens in very dark environments. You had to because these screens didn't have a lot of power, a lot of power when it came behind games. So you had to watch them in dark demonstrations. When I came onto YouTube um, around in, um, about five years back, I remember watching a lot of video demonstrations on the uh, Galaxy, um, I think it's the Galaxy G, uh, I think I could, GD or G7, I can't remember what it was, but these were the 737, Galaxy 737s and uh, 747 uh, projectors. And a lot of the demonstrations were done in dark environments, very, very dark environments. I think the majority of, um, of maybe 80% of the YouTube videos at that time were done in really dark environments because it was unheard of to see somebody watching videos in a fully lit environment. All right, so um, that's when people started developing um, higher gain screen screens that you can watch with the lights on. I started doing it with the Digital One Crystal Screen Paint 2.0. Uh, if you go back and watch my archives, I did it when um, ambient light projection screens, uh, when I was doing the screen paint with the call 2.0 uh, Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. So um, with that being said, um, today's technology is about having your projection screen in a fully lit environment because today, and I deal with a lot of customers, the first thing they ask me is how much light can the screens reject? Because a lot of people are using these in sport bars, they're using these for their home, they're using them for their backyard events, whatever they're using them for. And a lot of people are replacing their TVs now for projectors because now projectors are more high tech now. You know, they come in 3D, they come in 4K, they're 1080p and all the cool stuff. And instead of you having a, a, uh, a 60 inch or an 80 inch on your wall, you can have a screen now that's 100 inches. You can have a screen that's 120, 150. So people now are leaning toward projectors. But one of the gripes people have about projectors is the fact that they're, they feel that they're plagued that they have to use a projector in a dark environment and they don't want to be in a dark environment. These are people who have family settings. These are people who, when they come to the living room, they're watching movies or reading books. Or, you know, they're doing all the things people do when they, and they're in the living room. They're talking. Nobody wants to do that in a dark environment 24-7. They don't want that. They want to be able to use this in a well-lit environment. And that's why you see a lot of companies pushing toward ambient light rejection screens, ambient light rejection screens. You see demonstrations with Supernova, you see demonstrations with Elite screens. They're talking about the ambient light rejections of their screens because this is very important. For anyone in this decade and time to come out and make a, make a comment saying, well, is ambient light really, is, is, is light rejection screens really important? Like, can't everybody just watch them in the dark? No, nobody wants to watch a screen in the dark 24-7. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you want to have the lights out, you want to have the whole movie experience, but there are other times you want to sit there, watch a TV show, watch sports, whatever, have your friends come over. You don't want to be in a dark environment 24-7. On top of that, I hear um, 
customers who are married and their wives are very upset because they do not want to be in a dark environment 24 7 hey husband wants to sit there and watch the game they want to sit there and read their books their articles uh, they want to do what they want to do it's a family it's a living room it shouldn't be an area where it has to be dark in order to just enjoy the screen so to make a comment like that is basically tells me and tells everybody else that maybe your screen paint isn't what people think it is. Maybe it has to be used in control lit environments. Maybe the gain on the screen is not what you, everybody thinks it is. Two point, a 2.0 and a screen should be able to be able to be hit with a ton of ambient light and surpass with no problem. I'll show you why. This is um, the rest of them I have over there against my screen. This is um, the Dark Star 9. Now the Dark Star 9 is by Elite Screens, right? It's a big company. Their gain is a 0 0.9. This is a, get this one, correct here real quick, so you guys can see this. That's a 0 0.9 gain, 0 0.9. Now you have a screen that's 2.0, all right? That's a very powerful gain in a screen. I just dropped a sample sheet. This right here, this screen right here is by Dapper. Dapper screens are about a 0 0.9. And then, uh, sandwich sheet that fell on the floor. These are 4K ready screens. Here's another Dapper screen, 4K ready. This screen right here is a 1.0. So mind, this is a 1.0 screen. This is probably about anywhere in the range of uh, 1,500, maybe $2,000 for the screen. And it is a um, 1.0 screen. And if you have a screen that's 2.0, if you're saying that's the gain of your screen, uh, I don't know what you're saying about that, but you're saying that's the gain of your screen, then it should be able to be able to do this with no problem. Now our screens, as I said before, do not use the traditional gain count. We have a chemical that's coded, it's called smart technology gain. That's the reason why our screens basically can produce uh, tons of, actually a perfect picture and tons of ambient light. So with that being said, that anybody who comes on YouTube and says, hey, guess what? Is ambient, is, is, is a fully lit room really important? Yeah, it is important. In this decade of time, it is important because now people, like I said, you can go out and you can spend for a 90-inch Sony TV would cost you about between nine and $10,000, okay? We're talking about a lot of money for a TV, all right? So you can go out and buy a 4K projector by JVC for around about four to $5,000. This is a 4K projector around four to $5,000. And... You can still go out and buy one of our screens, which is actually under $2,000 if you decide to go to Silver Diamond or if you decide to go to the Crystal H Technology screens. You're talking about a screen size that's from 180 to 260 for a gallon, about $543, that's still cheaper than a $10,000 Sony TV. One other thing too I'm going to bring up. Now in one of his videos he says, why spend the money for a TV? when you can actually paint the screen. Well, the difference between your screen and a TV is a TV, I can turn it on and I can use it in a fully lit environment. Your screen, I can't do that. I have to watch it in a dark environment 24 seven. I can't use the same amount of lighting that I would use in my environment with a screen, that with a TV screen, which would be all this light right here. Same amount of lighting I would use if I have a TV, but if I did the same thing with that particular screen paint, it wouldn't work because I would have to turn on all these lights. So that's the difference. All right, so in order to sell a product, you must show people that, hey, doesn't it make a difference if you have a TV, doesn't it make a difference. Um, if, if you have a TV, our screens will actually outperform it. Our screens can be used in well-lit environments. You must tell them that, hey, look, this is what my screen can do compared to a TV. This is how you can save money. This is why I do my screen samples against these expensive high-end uh, projection screens too. Not only that to prove my screen is amazing, but to also prove that you don't have to go out and spend four or $5,000 for a high-tech screen when the Silver Diamond can do it with no problem. And you've seen the Crystal Ridge, the Crystal Ridge technology screen can do it with no problem. All right, so just want to get that out there. Just want to clear that up real quick. Now, this right here is the Crystal Ridge technology roll-on screen. Now. Looking at the screen, you can see exactly how much light is hitting the screen. This is something a lot of people don't do on YouTube. They'll show light in the environment, but what they won't do, and you have to look for this, is they won't show you how much light is literally hitting the screen. They'll have, and I love this so much, I really do. They'll have the screen here, and then back here, they'll have two windows, 
And then they'll say, hey, look, it's ambient light rejection. It's not ambient light rejection because there's no light literally hitting that screen. By the time the light comes through that window, and judging by the daytime or the hours of when that video was shot, if it was done 12 in the afternoon, that means the sun is no longer hitting the side of your wall. There's just basic ambient light cascading through. It's not in a direct path of your screen. It cancels out before it gets to your screen because if it didn't, if it didn't cancel out, then that part of the screen will be lit by the ambient light that was coming through the window. I love how people understand how light actually travels. So if I have light, as you can see around my screen, there is light nailing my screen. You can see the light cascading on my screen. This is what I'm trying to show you. So when you see these video demonstrations of people saying, hey look, this is ambient light rejection, it's not ambient light rejection because there is no light literally hitting the screen. It gives the appearance that there is light in the room and therefore because there's light in the room, the screen is producing and able to function in a well-lit environment. And that's not true because if you take that screen and you put it in an environment with well condensed lighting, it will fail miserably. All right, so with that being said, let's get this started. <coughs> Sorry about that, that's me dealing with my cold. That's been plaguing me for days, it won't go away. So this is very important. I'm sorry to go on with such, I, some, I have some people send me messages like you talk too much in your demonstrations. Well, this is the reason why I talk a lot in my demonstrations because if you're gonna sell a product, you must fully educate and acknowledge the person who is buying this product from you. You know, you're not gonna go into a store or go buy, pick up a car and a person gonna say, hey, this is a car, it has seats, it has doors, this is a window, you turn it on and it goes and you're gonna drop like 50, 60 grand on this car. You're not going to do that. You want to know everything there is about the car. Everything there is about the car. This is why I try to acknowledge my customers on um, our merchandise. This is why I talk. This is why a lot of people are just buying projection trees for the first time. Uh, this is their first time actually um, having a screen. So I'm basically trying to teach them and educate them on exactly what to look for and what not to look for. So. You have to know, if you're just coming on there and you're just explaining, look, blah, 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 then just forget it. I mean, when I got into this field, I had to watch a ton of tutorial videos on projectors, on screens and everything. And I'm glad these people on YouTube came on there and they explained it thoroughly because it educated me, allowed me to learn and allowed me to understand exactly what I was doing and what I was getting myself into when I got into this line of business. Look at this, fully lit environment, no much light is hitting my screen. Now I have two spotlights, I have the bar light at the bottom, it's a 500 watt bar light, and I have two um, lamps on each side. Look how amazing that screen looks. That's what you want. That's what you want. When it comes to having a screen, that is supposed to be ambient light rejection. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, I'm not going to have that much light in my environment, but this is what I'm trying to explain to you. Even if you don't have um, my uh, internet acting up, it gets choppy from time to time. I've had Comcast come out here and look at it, but it still has this issue from time to time. So let's see what's going on with it. But just in case if my time runs out here, um, hold on for a minute, I'm just trying to get this up and going. I'm sorry guys. I go to this, guys have seen a few of my videos where I've had problems with Comcast, man. I am so, can't, I can't wait to get rid of them. I'm in the process of actually looking at for uh, something else because they're, they're a nightmare, man. It can be a nightmare. Like their internet is like really, really freaking bad from time to time. I don't know, you might be someplace where your internet is fantastic and Comcast is working out for you, but whew. Other days, some other people might be going through some crap. So let's get this. Hopefully we can get this second one in there. If we can't get the second one in there, I do apologize. Like I said, it's, it's some of the crap I go through in my day when it comes to my technical difficulties when I'm 
dealing with freaking Comcast. And I had like two boxes switched out and it's still like, ugh. You know what's even worse? What's even worse is, and I, I want to talk a little bit about this. <laughs> what's even worse is when you had the internet service and it's, and it's crapping up on you so bad and then the commercial comes on about how people enjoy it so much. <laughs> it's a hurt piece. Alright, here we go. Man, I'm telling you. My, my day's in the morning, bro, I'm telling you. Alright, so just showing you just a little bit more. Just to add a little bit more in there for you guys. Uh, just in case if my time runs out, and it probably will, I'm Kenneth Burr from Crystal Edge Technology Projection Screens using Smart Technology Game. The screen you're looking at right now is the Crystal Edge Technology Roll-On Screen. Mind you, this is the screen I hit with garden hose. <coughs> this is the screen I marked up with a bunch of spray paint and other nonsense. Um, <coughs> you want to see, sorry about the coughing, I'm, I got a really bad cold. <coughs> mm. If you want to see how the screen was painted, um, look at the bottom of the comment section, boom, down there, and you'll be able to see me actually paint the screen when it first started. you also get a chance to see the demonstration where I marked the screen up and repainted it. And also, too, you'll be able to see where I took the screen out in the backyard around 641 in the evening with a perfect picture with a 2000 projector about 10 feet back and hit it with a garden hose. So yeah, this screen paint is absolutely amazing. So like I said, when you do that, when you watch demonstrations, then people are gonna say, hey, our screen is ambient light projection. Well, you have to be able to back that up. Let me go back here a minute. And my, uh, like I said, my Comcast is, is, is a headache. I deal with it, I just deal with it. All right, so basically this, this is what I'm showing you. So this is our Crystal Edge Technology screen paint. Uh, this right here would be the dark silver. Let me back up here a little bit more so you guys can get more light in here. See more light that's in this room. See the screen. So my projector is about, I got it farther back than the last time. So it's about a good maybe uh, 14 feet back from the screen. And this is what you want. So if you replace your TV and you decide you want to go out and buy our Crystal Witch Technology screens, this is what you're getting. You can use our screens in a full lit environment. It doesn't make a difference on the color of your walls because you will have some people tell you, hey, look, if a wall is white, it will reflect 10 times more light. This is not a problem with our screens. If you have windows in your environment, not a problem with our screens. You can take the screen outside. It is fully weatherproof, easy to paint. You can paint the screen um, around uh, 10 to 20 minutes. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes also to the dry if you're using a fan. So that helps too. Also to add, it's a one coat application, very easy to use. Pretty much your kids can paint the screen for you. Okay guys, again, Kenneth Burr from Crystal Edge Technology Projection Screens using Smart Technology Gain. Hope you guys enjoyed this video demonstration. Look at this. I got to show you this one more time. Look how much light's hitting the screen. One thing to look for when you watch a video demonstration with someone who claims their screen is amber light rejection, ask them to block the projector and show the screen without the picture on the, on, on the projection screen so you can see exactly how much light is hitting that screen. Okay guys, you all have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. Oh, sorry, really, really quick. I forgot to do this for those of you who are watching it for the first time. Here's my projector, my NEC BT 595 projector, 2000 lumens, 720p, 600 by 800 res. This is an SVGA projector. Cost 160 bucks. You can find them on eBay for $50. Proving you do not have to spend a lot of money for a high-tech projector. 2000 lumens, 13, I think about 13 to 14 feet back. And look at my screen cutting through all this light and looks absolutely fantastic. And mind you, a 100-inch screen would only cost you around $368 with $554. For our one gallon, you can paint up to 180 to a 260-inch screen. Come on. All right, guys. My name is Kenneth Bird again, from Crystal Edge Technology Projection Screens, using Smart Technology Game. Thank you all.